Ahoy mates, Julie here, and welcome to Wednesday's episode of The Voters TV. First up today, there's a familiar debate splashing around in nautical news. Many boaters have long since called for a boating license, with requirements similar to a driver's license. Critics of the idea point to the difficulty of implementing such a program among the millions of U.S. boaters, among other concerns, including a potentially negative impact on the boating economy. In late September, early October, Seato International, an international marine towing firm, plans to host an executive roundtable discussion at its New York headquarters to discuss mandatory boater education. The roundtable will include marine industry representatives from key business segments. The meeting was originally planned for this month, July, but was postponed at the last minute due to some attendees' schedule conflicts. According to the 24-year-old CETO firm, the best way to ensure that boaters, like drivers, adhere to basic safety practices is through universal boater education. CETO's president, Captain Keith Cummings, in a statement from the company, says that CETO believes requiring boater education will significantly decrease accident and mortality rates and also encourage new entrants into boating. According to CETO, currently more than 30 states have some form of educational requirements in place, but only a handful of these states have voter education requirements that apply to every voter in the state, regardless of age. Voter licensing is also favored by the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. However, Boat U.S., that's the Boat Owners Association of the United States, who, like CETO, offers sea towing services, points to recent data that suggests that recreational boating is safer now than ever before. The Boat U.S. Association also claims that licensing would fail to deliver a significant increase in national security. Seems like we've got a bit of a debate going on here. Of course, the Boaters TV will report with further updates on this issue. In the meantime, let's take a look at a new segment here on the Boaters TV, Ship's Domain, giving you some navigational advice as it pertains to the internet and cruising and perusing boating websites. With regard to the boater safety issue we brought up in our last segment, at the Boaters TV we came across two websites that let you take boating safety into your own hands. The first is the National Safe Boating Council at www.safeboatingcouncil.org. And it takes a straightforward approach with a simple content menu in the left side column including newsletters, press releases, training opportunities, products, and other resources. The content is thorough, including weather reports from NOAA and several safe boating courses. It's a good site for someone just beginning to get familiar with safe boating practices. Another option, the U.S. Coast Guard Office of Boating Safety can be found at www.uscgboating.org. It's a more news-oriented site than the Safe Boating Council site. The menu is organized along the top in highly visible tags, while the left column is reserved for recent alerts, including product recalls, safety bulletins, and other important news. The site is probably more useful for someone already well-versed in boating safety and is looking more for recent announcements and new information. So, there you go. Two sites to check out. Next up, it's time for another edition of our Did You Know segment. Did you know that a boat operator is twice as likely to become impaired by alcohol, drink for drink, than someone sitting in a bar? That's right. The marine environment, motion, vibration, engine noise, sun, wind, and spray, accelerates the impairment of the person who is drinking. These stresses cause fatigue that makes a boat operator's coordination, judgment, and reaction time decline. People who would never consider drinking while driving a car down a city street doing 40 miles an hour somehow justify the same behavior while operating a boat. Factor in that many people have much more experience driving a car than a boat, and it's no surprise that tragic accidents are bound to occur due to BUI. That's boating under the influence. And this is why it really goes without saying that yo ho ho and a bottle of rum just won't cut it on the waterways anymore. So here's your gentle reminder. It is illegal to operate a boat while under the influence of alcohol or drugs in every state in the U.S. The U.S. Coast Guard also enforces a federal law that prohibits BUI. The law pertains to all boaters from canoes to large ships including foreign vessels operating in U.S. waters. So keep all this in mind, and most importantly, remember, safe boating is more fun. Finally today, and we'll end on a lighter, happier note, let's get wet and wild. The Boaters TV wants to pass along a reminder that the second annual Aquapalooza event is this coming weekend. 
They're calling it the largest on-water party of the summer, and it's being put on by our friends at Sea Ray and the Sea Ray Owners Club. But hey, attendance doesn't require that you own a Sea Ray. Bring along any kind of boat and be ready to party. Ah yes, safely. This year's signature event will be held this Saturday, July 21st in Virginia at Fairview Beach on the Potomac River, hosted by Prince William Marina. With an all-day concert kicking off at noon and headliner country music star Taylor Swift playing at one. But there are events all over the country. You can check out what Aquapalooza celebrations might be going on in your area by visiting the official website for the event, www.aquapalooza.com, or simply call up your local Sea Ray dealer. And that about wraps it up for today's episode of The Boaters TV. We'll be back here on Friday. Until then, safe and happy boating to you all. Take care. This episode of The Boaters TV was brought to you by the letter M. That's M as in Mike. And signifying, I have a doctor on board. <laughs>